All right, so today we're going to continue on with 9.6. We're going to continue looking at graphing of secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. We're also going to look at damping effects on trig functions. So first, I want you to graph two periods of y equals 2 minus secant of 3 pi x plus pi halves. Pause the video. Unpause it when you're ready to check your work. All right, so what you see in purple here should be your graph for two periods of this secant function. Let's look at how we got that though. We have a vertical shift of two, that's our d value there. A is negative one because it's a negative secant. The period is two thirds. The intervals there are four are one sixth. The horizontal shift is negative one sixth. So I start at negative one sixth and then add one sixth to get all of the uh, x values. I have my vertical shift of positive two and an a value of one, so I'm going to go up one and down one from there. The negative fact, or the negative part of the a value, made the uh, cosine graph flip. So you see the blue points here; those would be the points if I was graphing cosine. Okay, so now if you haven't already, uh, go through and find one secant or one cosecant, e or I'm sorry, one secant and one cosecant equation or one tangent and one cotangent equation for each of the graphs on the 9-6 notes sheet that I gave you. Um, pause the video and then unpause when you're ready to check your answers. Remember there, just like with sine and cosine for these types of problems, there are many correct answers. Try to make it as easy on yourself as possible though. Alright, so for the first one here, we want to recognize that we have a period of pi. I can see that. Um, by drawing in the asymptotes, or I could compare the distance between um, uh, peaks on the curve, uh, but I want to be able to recognize that I have a period of pi. If the period is pi, then b is 2. A, or let's skip over a for now, the vertical shift is 0 because what is halfway in between the actual curves? So halfway in between is nothing, but it's a value of 0 that's nothing. Uh, a is 2 because from that 0 I go up 2 and I go down 2 to get to each curve. Now for cosecant and secant I'm going to have different horizontal shifts. Again I drew in one of the asymptotes here. It's on 0 therefore I know that cosecant could start at 0. So if it has a horizontal shift of 0 it's going to be y equals 2 cosecant of 2x. Uh, for secant I have to have some sort of horizontal shift because I have to start at one of these uh, points. So I could pick other values, but I chose pi fourths. So I said that the horizontal shift is pi fourths, so therefore I said y equals 2 secant of 2 times the quantity x minus pi fourths. So just like what I did a lot with sine and cosine, I took the b value outside of the parentheses so that I can see the horizontal shift better. Okay, so here uh, for tangent, I said y equals tangent of pi of the quantity pi x minus 1. And for cotangent, I said y equals negative cotangent of pi times the quantity x minus 1 half, and then minus 1. So how did I get that? Well, I can see I have a vertical shift of negative 1. And I can see that because that's where the graphs are turning, are making their, um, I should say, that's what the graphs are uh, symmetrical about in a, in a way. If this was the origin, I could see that there would be symmetry about the origin, but it's shifted down one. Um, the period is one. I can see that because the distance between consecutive points, or if I draw in the asymptotes, it is a distance of one, therefore b has to be pi. a is going to be plus or minus one, it's going to be positive one for tangent, negative one for cotangent. Now, with tangent, remember the middle of the graph relates to the horizontal shift, or the middle of the period, I'm sorry. The middle of the period relates to the horizontal shift. So the middle of one period is at zero, therefore this has a horizontal shift of zero. Remember, a tan the standard tangent function, the middle of the period is at zero. So this has a horizontal shift of zero, so that's why this is just pi x. And then the minus one is our vertical shift. For cotangent, uh, the period starts at an asymptote. Well, I have an asymptote at one half. So this has a horizontal shift of one half. I could also make this positive one half and it would have, or a plus one half because I could say it has a horizontal shift of negative one half. That doesn't matter. Um, it's a negative cotangent graph because a negative cotangent and a positive tangent look the same. Uh, and then I put again the pi outside the parentheses to make it easier to see um, the horizontal shift. 
Now, one other thing that, just to reemphasize, that might have been difficult on this is understanding how do I know the A value. Well, what I'm looking for is from the middle of the period to the asymptote, halfway in between, how far up or down am I? And in this case, you know, I'm kind of approximating this, but you can assume that I'm going to give you relatively nice numbers. Um, so it appears, and again, my asymptote is not drawn perfectly, so that's why halfway is kind of an approximation, or is an approximation. It appears that halfway in between, I'm one up. And here it appears that halfway in between, I'm one down. That's how I came up with my A value of one. For the next example, it's much easier to see the A value because of where I've put the grid lines uh, for the scale of the actual graph. Um, but so here again, or uh, here the period is going to be 2 pi, which gives us a B value of 1 half. A again is plus or minus 1, depending on which one we're doing, tangent or cotangent. Here we have a vertical shift of 0. So for tangent, I have a horizontal shift now. I chose the horizontal shift of pi. Uh, remember, tangent, the middle of the period, represents the horizontal shift. So this is over pi. So for tangent, I said y equals negative tangent of 1 half times the quantity x minus pi. Again, I took the b value outside of the, I factored the b value outside of the parentheses to make it easier to see the horizontal shift. Um, and it's a negative tangent graph. For cotangent, the start of the period is an asymptote. I have an asymptote at zero, so the easiest cotangent graph to write is with a horizontal shift of zero. It's a positive cotangent graph, so I can just say y equals cotangent of the quantity x over two. All right, so here I can see I have a vertical shift of zero. The period is two pi. I got that by two consecutive uh, points. Uh, so therefore, b is one. a, again, is going to be plus or minus one, depending on if it's secant or cosecant. Uh, I know that it's a value of one, though, because from that vertical shift of zero, I go up one and I go down one. So for cosecant, I have to have a horizontal shift. So I chose here, I drew in this asymptote. Remember, cosecant starts at an asymptote because sine would start on the axis. So this is at pi halves because it's halfway between zero and pi. So I have y equals cosecant of the quantity x minus pi halves. For secant, I start on one of the curves. So if I want, I can say that I have no horizontal shift, but it's going to be a negative secant uh, function. So I said y equals negative secant of x. You could have done a horizontal shift to make it positive. So for instance, I could have had, um, if I pick this point as my horizontal shift, I could say y equals secant of x minus pi. Now I have a horizontal shift of pi, but it's a positive secant function. Either way is correct, and again, there are many other correct answers. Okay, so the next three might be a little bit more difficult, or should be a little bit more difficult. Uh, I want you to try and first graph them by hand, so don't use a calculator. Then, if you haven't done this already, then I want you to try and look at the graph of the calculator and see if it was correct with what you got, or with what you thought, and if it's not, um, try to understand why it is. So do that now if you haven't already, um, and then when you're ready to check your answers or look at the work, uh, unpause the video. So pause it now, graph these, and then unpause. Okay, so let's look at how we can understand how to graph this and what it's going to look like. Well, first I know that the range for sine is negative 1 to 1, including negative 1 and 1. Therefore, the range for the cube root of x times the sine of x would be if I multiply this by the cube root of x. So negative cube root of x to cube root of x. All right, so now let's look at the positive half of the graph and what that would look like. Well, I know when x is 0, y is 0. I know when x is pi, y is 0, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, every interval of pi, y is going to be 0 because that's when sine is 0 and so 0 times anything is 0. Well, what about these other values? Well, I know these are the values when sine is either 1 or negative 1. So I don't know what the cube root of pi halves is or 3 pi halves off the top of my head, but I know that it's larger than 1 and a greater than negative than negative 1. And I also know that it's going to continue to get bigger. So this curve is, again, this is not perfect, but hopefully it gives you the idea that this is going to continue uh, to grow. And you can see it sat in the wrong spot. Um, this point should be down here. 
but this is going to continue to grow and expand the further we get away from zero. And then if you looked at the graph on your calculator, you see the same thing happens in the negative direction, so I'm just going to kind of draw this in. Again, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but you get the idea that it's growing as we go away from um, axis zero, and as we get close to axis zero, we get what we call dampening because the bounces are shrinking. Okay, so if we look at the next one, uh, we can see kind of what's going to happen here, similar to the last one, but this is going to come out to be different. So our range for cosine translates into what is our range for this function. Well, now if I understand the e to the x function, that's an exponential function, it's going to grow very quickly, and so that's why my graph here is not going to be to scale at all. Um, but I know that I know these points. At pi halves, the graph is going to be at 0. At 3 pi halves, it's going to be at 0. At 0, it's going to be at 1. Now, what happens in between is something like this. This goes way down here. This goes way up here. And then way off the screen, it's going to turn. And it's going to go way down again. And this is going to just continue to grow very largely. Um, as far as how high and low these humps are going because e to the x grows exponentially and cosine is just changing signs between positive and negative. Over here, it's actually going to do the opposite and it's going to start to taper off and approach zero. Uh, still going positive and negative where cosine is zero. Alright, then the last one now here our range changes slightly because it's absolute value, so the absolute value of sine is from, the range is from 0 to 1, so the absolute value of the cube root of x times the sine of x is from 0 to the cube root of x. Um, now, the, the same time when sine is 0, this is still going to be 0. Uh, so the only thing that's going to change now, and again, this is not going to be perfectly accurate, the point of this, don't worry, I would not expect you to have incredibly accurate graphs of these by hand. Um, it's more that you understand the concepts of what dampening is and how it affects a graph and why it affects a graph that way. But so this is what our curve is going to look like where again uh, we're going to keep fluctuating between 0 and 1 but as the q root of x grows very slowly each one of these mounds is going to become larger. And the same is going to be true as we go off in the negative direction. This should be symmetrical. Again, my graph is not very accurate, um, but hopefully you understand the idea that this, this function should be symmetrical about the y uh, axis. And that's it for the end of our notes here. Again, don't get uh, so caught up if you're struggling with these dampening functions. It's more understanding the concept as opposed to really having to draw an accurate graph by hand.